Hey, what's up? Welcome back. I'm TJ. Today we're talking ISDT K1. Going to try to knock this one out pretty quick to end a short week. Today is Friday. We're going into the weekend and hopefully you're going to be able to go out and do some flying. I know that's what I plan on doing. So the ISDT K1, it is a smaller brother of the K2, not only in number size, but also in power. And that was stupid. I apologize. But literally the K1 is, well, smaller. I guess it's stupid, but it still makes sense. So the K1 is a 100 watt AC, 250 watt, well, 250 watt times two DC. Meaning if you're using AC power, it does come with a power cable. You plug it directly into the wall. You're going to get 100 watt AC, so 50 watts per side, which is, you know, it's not, you're not going to break any records with it, but it gives you the ability to charge your batteries without needing any extra bells and whistles. Now, if you need the extra power of the DC, that's the number one reason I love the K series is the flexibility. So you can plug it into the wall, you can get that 100 watts. However, you can actually plug in an external power supply that we have on buddyrc.com or you know external battery source, what have you. So it does have the XT60 here on the back and then the AC port. So if one's plugged in, you literally cannot plug in the other without unplugging at first. So pretty cool, simple safety feature. And then on the front, you have your you know, 6S balance port. So it is good for up to 6S. You have your XT60 plugs here in the front. They are good for the bat go system. You got a plug here on the front, again, USB-C, good for firmware updates, things like that. But the whole point of this video, we're just gonna dive into it, run through the menu system as we do with most ISDT videos, just to give you a closer look at if you actually bought this, what you could expect right out of the box. So let's dive into the charger. I'll see you there. So ISDT K1, as we talked about, so on the front here, you have your directional up and down, your channel one, your channel two, because it is a two channel charger. So you have your channel one over here with your XT60, your balance port. You got a USB port in the middle here for firmware updates, what have you. Channel two's on this side. Nothing fancy over here. You got your fan on the back for ventilation, cooling. And then the AC port and DC port here on the back, depending on how you are charging this. And then you can see, I've still got my nice little screen, uh, technically not a screen protector. So ISDT does come with screen protectors, which is huge. And it allows people like me to actually remove this film, but I'm not doing it for this one. However, you can't do that. You pull the film off, take ISDT screen protector, stick on here. It's a really cool addition that they do. And then we talked about it already does come with the AC cord to plug this directly into the wall. For this testing purposes, we're just using a 4S 1550 milliamp hour glacier battery plugged directly into the back. Now I did test the charging features earlier. And you know, like I said, we've been using these for quite some time. I just put them on the actual workbench so you could see a little bit of the charging, not really any reason for us to dive too deep into that. But we are gonna go into the menu system, just so you can see, like we said, exactly what you're getting right out of the box. So as with all FDT chargers, you can touch the channel buttons to go to channel one and channel two. To go into the menu system, you hold both down. So it takes you in here. Dual task is exactly how it sounds where you're using each side separately. The parallel task is when it goes into that synchronous parallel charging mode where you can tie both sides in to get more power into whatever battery you're charging. DC power channel one is a really cool feature that all ISDT chargers typically nowadays have where you can come up here and you can go into voltage. And let me see, can you actually see that? That's pretty, try to make it a little bit easier to see, I apologize. So voltage, you can come in here from five volts up to 24 volts. And what that's gonna do is allow you to get that power output to your channel one. So your, your voltage, 24 volts, current can come from two or 0.2 amps up to five amps. And then output simply is on or off. So we turn it on and now right here on our channel one, we are getting 24 volts out at five amps out of this 4S battery. So pretty cool. But this honestly for me, if I got a power supply and I plug into this, I can use that and then adjust the voltage and the amperage to actually power like a motor or something for testing. It's, it's a really cool feature. I love having that. But let's go back, dive further into the menu system. So system settings, lowest input voltage. You see I have it set on 14 volts. And the reason is we have a 4S battery. 
So a 4S battery at like 3.5 volts per cell is 14 volts. I don't want to discharge this battery too low while we're doing this video. So that's why I have lowest input voltage set to there. Our max input power, 550 watts. Backlight, low, middle, high, exactly how it sounds. It's gonna change the brightness of that backlight. Our volume, again, off, low, middle, high, just our beeps, alarms, things like that. Completion tone, single or repeat. So when the battery gets done charging, is it gonna tell you one time or is it gonna sit there and scream at you until you turn it off? For me, I leave it on repeat. So just in case I'm not paying attention 100%, I know when it's done. Split screen, 30, 60 seconds or off is just how fast it takes it to time out if you're on one screen before it goes back to the split screen. Back go channel one, channel two, just how it sounds. I don't have back go technology batteries here, so we can't really test that. Language, English, theme, dark or bright, just changes it from the bright white screen like this as it's harder to see down to the dark screen that makes it a little bit easier on camera. Keep trickle. Just like it sounds, if your battery gets done charging and you're not taking it off charge right away, instead of it sitting there and just running down, now it's gonna keep the battery fully charged while it waits for you to actually come and remove it. Self-test, just like it sounds, self-test the battery. Channel one calibration. So I don't have, actually let's grab this here. So we have a 2S battery from our N1, M1 helicopter. We're gonna put that here in channel one. You can see it actually lit up. So go back into our menu system come up to channel one calibration and this actually allows us to fine tune each individual cell. So if we have a multimeter that we know is 100% accurate, we can test each cell on this battery and then come in here and actually tell it what each individual cell is. In my experience, ISDT does a really good job on having these calibrated straight out of the factory. So personally, I've never had to adjust anything, but having that ability is great and you have channel one calibration channel channel two system info and back now like we said i did go through and test this well pretty extensively at this point everything's great if you are in the market for a new charger and or you're somebody new into the hobby industry the k1 is a really cost effective way to kind of jump in use it as a wall charger get everything you need like that. And then as you increase and need more power, whether you're using bigger batteries or more batteries, then you can always upgrade and get a power supply or something like that to actually get more out of the ISDT K1. So as always guys, really appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for joining me for this. If you're not subscribed, definitely click the button, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.